So AI is evolving very fast and getting smarter and smarter every day. It can pass exams, it can do tasks better than everyone else, it, it knows all of human history for all of eternity, and it's really going to shake things up. But the thing many of us are worried about, you know, is AI coming for our jobs? So today we're going to break that down. I've been a software engineer for a long time, and I've been using AI for both personal and work for about three years now. I've seen its benefits, I've seen its limitations. Today we're going to discuss the basics of AI, you know, who should be worried, who's fine, and how we can use AI to our benefit. My first overall impression is that it's going to majorly change the game. But I also think a lot of the concerns about there being no jobs soon are overblown. Uh, whenever a super innovative technology comes out like this, it'll shift to where the jobs are, but it's not going to remove them. So every single one of us right now has a full-time assistant that knows everything and can help with everything. And this is going to change everything from labor markets to education and more. It can read data sets and entire books in seconds and give you anything. I mean, if we use this properly, you can be very ahead of the game. As with a any major innovation, you got to get out ahead of it. So let me tell a story of how I used AI at my job and how it helps me to get promoted. So I first became aware of ChatGPT through a friend who works in California. And, you know, I'm from Wisconsin. So usually California finds out about these things, you know, weeks before we do in the Midwest. And it was one of the few moments in my life where I saw a tool, I saw a technology and I said, holy shit, like this is going to be a game changer. And I became obsessed with it, you know, what it is, how it works, pushing its limits, just seeing what I could do. I was trying to generate essays, I was doing research with it, I was writing code. And in a few months, my company adopted the GPT version three to integrate with our coding environment. And my first thoughts was, okay, this can basically do any repetitive or entry level coding work. Level one engineers often get asked to do very basic design things like build a button, give us an empty page or a simple function. And the AI can do this and it can do it very well. In my case, our team heavily valued high quality code that you'd write the code and then you'd write a bunch of automated tests for it. So usually my workday before AI would be, I'd write code for four hours, then go spend another four hours testing it to just ensure that it holds up. So now what I would do, I'd write the code for four hours, maybe even less depending on how fast GPT could research it. I'd paste it into the GPT program and then ask it to write thorough tests. So I'd enter the code in and then boom, just spits out a bunch of tests. And uh, so now what used to take me four hours, maybe took me 10 minutes. It was just going through and correcting minor errors with the GPT code. So it's not perfect, but it was very good and it was rapidly improving. So going forward, I found more uses for the AI. If I needed to research a type of technology to make a decision on, instead of me going through 50 pages of documentation, I'd go straight to GPT, ask it to give me a pros cons list and a one page summary of this and, and how should I use it given my situation. It saved me research time, it saved me testing time, it saved time on easy tasks. I was like, wow, I was saving hours, days, weeks eventually. So before people really got involved with it, I was one of the few people obsessed with it and using it at my company and it really boosted my productivity. Eventually this helped me to get promoted because I had so much work to show for it. And AI played a big role in it because I embraced the change before others did. I'm really watching AI right now and looking for opportunities to understand it better and use it in my life. Even for YouTube right now, my voice is an AI bot. No, I'm just kidding. But I do get accused of that at least once a week. I can't control my boring voice you know, whatever. This thing is powerful. You get what I'm saying. Now, I'm not going to spend forever on this, but it helps to understand a little bit about how, how AI works. At its core, AI is all about taking an input of a large amount of data and trying to predict the outcome. So you train an AI, meaning you just feed it lots of data, lots of scenarios, lots of outcomes, and it tries to predict outcomes based on the scenario you provide. So it relies on technologies like machine learning, where just systems learn from data to make predictions and neural networks, which mimic how the human brain works to process complex information and make decisions. When it comes to chat GPT, GPT stands for generative pre-trained transformer. So generative means that it generates text based on the input. Pre-trained means the model is trained in advance. So it's already been fed data, large data sets to be able to predict what words come next. 
and then a transformer, which is a type of neural network architecture that tries to understand context and relationships in language to produce you know, relevant responses that can help us with our jobs. So AI is obviously everywhere. You think of chatbots, think of virtual assistants, you think of uh, recommendation systems, you know, YouTube algorithm, uh, self-driving cars as well. It's really growing rapidly and just offering endless possibilities for the future. So. During my uh, experimentations with this, AI does fall short in many ways. I expect these to get better, but it is still has a lot of limitations. So first of all, it's very bad at understanding you know, human elements to us, humor, emotion, like gathering context of a situation. Like if you ask it to be funny or, or humorous, it just sounds stupid. It's not, it's not gonna say anything funny. Like I've asked it to analyze my thumbnails for YouTube sometimes, and I just think it gives bad recommendations sometimes. It's bad at being creative. It's also limited by the data it's trained on. So it could have been trained on you know, old data like that could have ended in 2023, for example. So it has limited understanding sometimes of the modern world. And also, if you're selectively putting data into the AI, you're not sure if you're putting in faulty data or bad data. So it is relied on data input by humans. So essentially, it's just an encapsulation of the thoughts that humans have. When you ask AI about you know, a complex situation, it also has to make generalizations and assumptions because it, it doesn't know everything. Like when you ask the AI a question in 1990 versus 2010, it could be a completely different answer. So it does have to make generalizations and assumptions. So there are resource limitations as well with the AIs. It's very compute heavy. It's very expensive to run and update some of these systems. Um, also as a software engineer, there's a big creative component and that cannot be replaced. Like, Plus, it's usually not perfect. Anytime I asked it to write code and I plugged it in, it was almost never correct the first time. So you still need an engineer to go in to fix its mistakes. I don't think software engineers are going away anytime soon. Like the AI will get better, but there's an inherent you know, human component to our job that the AI will not be able to replace anytime soon. My girlfriend's also a data analyst and they use AI for a lot of pattern prediction, a lot of uh, you know, getting rid of faulty data. And a lot of their day is spent just correcting mistakes that the AI made. So AI is improving, but it's heavily limited. So now let's talk about the jobs that could be in trouble from the AI revolution. So as AI gets better and better, which it conti will continue to get better, it's inevitably going to take more and more jobs and transfer that to somewhere else. This is just my opinion. If you have one of these jobs, I'm not saying you're getting laid off, but just to pay attention to this revolution. I think there's gonna be a lot of entry level white collar jobs affected by this, as well as anything super repetitive and manual that could be automated. So let's get into a couple of things I'm thinking about. Uh, one job classification to pay attention to is if you have an analytical or processing job. So it used to be that there were jobs that you do a lot of research on markets, a lot of research on law, stuff like that. And this is gonna be shaken up because instead of let's say you work in a law office, you're a legal assistant, and you, you have to go and look through documents for weeks to find uh, you know, exact laws and things you can tie to a case. The AI can extract this immediately because it has knowledge of all you know, laws that exist in a certain country. So paralegals and legal assistants, they're gonna have to get used to using these AI tools and it might make some of them repetitive. Also think of market research analysts, like AI can analyze data, it can spot trends, it can generate reports more efficiently than humans can. So something to keep in mind. Next, I think administrative roles such as customer support, you know, they could be replaced by chatbots. A lot of customer support is not that good already, and the AI can probably do a better job of extracting the problem from the person because it is becoming very difficult to tell what's a human, what's a robot when it comes to purely a text. So I think that stuff like bookkeeping and payroll clerks, accounting software is uh, going to quickly keep automating some of these processes, and that could make some of these lower level jobs repetitive. Any heavy repetitive or manual tasks such as super repetitive data entry clerks, um, the AI can handle changing and inputting large amounts of data quickly and with not many mistakes. So that's something to keep in mind of as well. Let's get into the physical side a little bit. I believe uh, robotics automation and, and streamlining production is going to be happening in these in factories. Truck drivers, self-driving technology and autonomous vehicles do pose a long-term threat, particularly for long haul trucking and uh, warehouse workers. Amazon's starting to use more robots for sorting and packaging goods, and who knows what all this stuff looks like in you know, 50 years, 100 years. The next one, I think creative fields, something like uh, you know, basic content writers, you know, copywriting, anytime where you need to make basic marketing copy without much creativity, that's, that could be in trouble. Now, graphic designers, I've tried 
using AI for graphic design. But I believe the AI will continue to get better and could replace a lot of humans in this way as well, because you might be able to generate visuals without needing advanced design skills. So those are just my opinions on this. Uh, I'm very curious to see where it goes. Obviously it could go in a lot of directions. So now let's talk about which jobs could be safe in the AI era. Obviously we'll start with AI and tech engineers. So there's people, there's a lot of engineers designed with maintaining these AI systems, a lot of data scientists, data engineers, interpreting data, you know, driving these models, DevOps engineers, managing the infrastructure that a lot of these tools are built on, you know, architects, higher level software engineers, I don't think they're going anywhere anytime soon. Obviously human centric roles, you know, therapists, counselors, healthcare professionals, like these are going to be replaceable. We'll always need these people because it's the inherent, you know, human element that I don't believe an AI will be touching anytime soon. High level creative directors and, you know, high level content creators, like well, AI can assist in generating ideas, like true creativity and originality is the human touch. Humans understand what we're going through way better than an AI does. So a lot of these high level creative roles, you know, entrepreneurs, high level business strategists, these require human experience. Next, obviously, physical jobs, skilled trades, technical work, electricians, plumbers, mechanics. This is hands-on work and problem solving in dynamic physical environments, construction workers too. Um, these, aren't gonna, these are gonna be very difficult to replace with robots, so there's that. Teachers, education and training. You'll, like, well, AI can help you with learning. You know, mentorship and guidance and the human element of educators is in, uh, invaluable, and uh, especially in complex subjects and trying to read you know, the problems of a student. That's not going away anytime soon. Also, any other jobs requiring complex human interaction, you know, sales executives, negotiators, project managers, you know, these aren't going away, guys. So as with any technology, this is just going to have a shift of a labor market. It's not going to straight up delete jobs. It's going to take a job in one industry and plop it over into another industry. So you got to use AI to help you. You got to stay ahead of it. Learn and adapt as with any innovation. Um, AI is going to come with lots of positives and negatives. Uh, first of all, it'll make a lot of stuff more efficient. There will be some cost savings to companies if they can basically have less people, which sounds bad, but that could happen. You'll have more access to information. You'll be able to do better research. It's available 24 seven. It's basically an assistant in your pocket at all times. Uh, some of the bad things could be you know, deep fakes, ethical concerns. It's gonna be very difficult to distinguish you know, what a human made versus what AI made or what someone said versus what they didn't say. That's gonna be crazy. I don't know what that looks like. It's gonna be lots of displacement, definitely some layoffs, uh, definitely some manipulation. It's, it's also still high cost and this might make people less creative if they become overly reliant on these tools. How am I preparing for the AI, AI revolution? Um, first of all, I'm investing in AI companies. I'm, I'm staying on top of it. Not gonna give out my secrets here, but made a few solid investments in this space, You know, already making money off of it. And um, I do believe there's a couple different angles to play. You could go for pure AI companies, You know, tech heavy ETFs, so like all the big tech's still gonna be using AI. I think Microsoft has about half of OpenAI, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, you can make investments here. Think of chips like Nvidia, that's taken off because these AI companies need need to process these data sets using a lot of computation power, right? So invest, think of how you can invest in AI companies with your money. And then I think more importantly, learn how to use AI tools to your advantage. Like use the tools, push their limits, see how it can help you save time in your day. Cause I'm confident if you're not using AI, there's ways you could do it to make your day a little bit better. So stay on top of it. I think as long as we stay very well prepared, it should work out well for you. So that's all. That's my thoughts. Uh, definitely let me know what you think in the comments and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.